Jithu, so much has gone on today. I need to hear a little bit of your recap of what some of the highlights were. Firstly, I want to thank you for two things. One okay. is being at the event, which okay. is great. Thank Proud. you for flying Proud in from New be. York. Yeah, thank and you. And two is thank you for saying my name right. There's like six people <laughs> in the world that know how to say it right. And everyone says G2, but you actually uh, nailed, nailed that. So I don't know how you oh. do that, but very, very uh, dexterous <laughs> on that front. Appreciate it. Um, so we had an AI summit. This was, uh, this was a long time in, in the works, but I always had this kind of fantasy at one point in time that I, I want to make sure that these conferences that we go to don't become conferences that are sales pitches, but they actually become conferences where you can learn and have insight from the leaders of, of a domain and really take that back with you. And then if you wanted them to engage in a sales pitch, then they could, you know? And so if you noticed over here today, but for all the 10 CEOs um, that came over here, uh, none of them really pitched that product that much. Mm -hmm. They were talking about the industry, the state of the industry, and it actually gave me a lot of optimism that you know, the progress is really fast in AI. The, um, um, the problems that we've been thinking of solving around security and safety have actually been completely front and center in even areas that I had not thought they would be relevant. Like, mm -hmm. I, I never thought that a product that we built for the enterprise would actually be relevant for ISVs wanting to go out and use that product. And in fact, Abhay from Typeface was like, hey, we might be able to do something with this. And I'm like, great. And so uh, it, it's very gratifying to see that the team, something that they've been working on for a long time, actually has meaningful market relevance. Because when you're building your product, you're kind of navel gazing to some degree. Yes, you get some input from the outside, but you, the, the, you're rolling the dice on whether it's going to work. And it's, um, it was very gratifying to see the response. So what was the recap from the day? I would say, um, you know, there's agentic is a big deal. But the, the thing, and I saw your tweet on this one that was really interesting is, we don't quite have agents working today. And I, I, I like holding that high bar mm -hmm. of saying that an agent is someone is when you can have a digital um, you know, uh, piece of code finish a job for you start mm -hmm. to finish. It's not mm -hmm. something that is just doing a small task here, augmenting what you're doing, but mm -hmm. just go get this done, taken care of, come back to me when you're done with it. Mm -hmm. We don't quite have one yet. There was a variance of time frame estimates and when that'll come, whether it's going to be three months from now, six months from now, 12, 18. I think the outset was 18. The smallest one was three. But the big insight that I got from that was we used to have a lot of debate whether AI was going to be valuable a year and a half ago. There was none of that today. Mm -hmm. right? It was more around, the debate was around time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and the debate was around what we need to do to go out and solve these problems and the different approaches that are going to be taken. But I, I didn't feel like there was a debate on the fact that this is going to be such a foundational change that I think there will be only two kinds of companies in the world. There'll be companies that know how to dexterously use AI or they're going to be, you know, fighting irrelevance. What have you seen in the patchwork of the companies that have kind of made that mindset shift in the last year and a half where they, a year and a half ago, is this going to be valuable? And now they are at the charge, ready to go. What was the shift that they made? Because there are some companies that have not yet made that shift. I, I think it's the day-to-day uh, the, the -day examples that we see where, you know, this was something that I mentioned where uh, I, I heard this, I think it was from... Um, Sundar or Sam Altman or someone, but they'd mentioned that if you go take a Waymo, right, the first time it feels like magic. It's like, oh my goodness, this is science fiction. The second time it's like, oh, this is cool. The third time you start complaining about the seats. <laughs> and humans have this amazing capacity to just start to normalize whatever state mm -hmm. they're in, and that becomes the new normal. And I feel like what seemed like magic on November 30th, 2020. 2022. 2022, yeah. sorry. Um, now it seems like a complete, like, okay, that's pretty basic. Mm -hmm. And we have all gotten our baseline meaningfully higher up. And when you get the baseline higher up, you actually start to see that, oh, if I just start to simulate to the fullest and extrapolate this a little bit more, it's not crazy to think that AGI is going to happen. It's not crazy to think that the cognitive capacity of machines will be greater than the collective corpus of humans at some point in time. Mm -hmm. not, not probably in the next 12 months, but it's going to be there sooner than we think, and longer than we hope. I think one thing that stood out, and I know you've been in the space for a while as well, 
But we heard from people who have been in the space for 20 plus years, yep. people who helped write the attention is all you need paper. That's right. And every single person said, the pace is staggering. It's moving faster than we think. So it surprised them. It, it's right, right. Which was kind of, for, for me, that was interesting, right? It's, it's a little like, comforting where yeah, you go, okay, yeah, I'm not the only yeah, one. I'm not the only one who feels yeah, that way, yeah, exactly. I'm not the only one to have a panic attack. That's <laughs> okay. um, I would love to hear what has surprised you in the pace of AI change, and maybe especially as you guys released AI Defense. Was there something surprising about what you were able to build? I think the, um, the, the universal desire, like there was, um, there was a moment where all of a sudden, like, November 30th, 22, ChatGPT comes out. By mid-January, every company was reconstructing their strategy to be AI first. Every company in the world. Every company that cared. There were some that there, there might have been. A, there was like a, that, that was the 10% population, yes. but I think everyone was like, we better do something yeah. about this, right? And then what happened is the, the cycle slowed down a bit after a while, so people started getting skeptical again about it. And I think what you've now started to see is you've seen kind of the, the, um, the hype, the trough of disillusionment, as Gardner calls it, and then there's going to be some level of acceleration again. I think we're in that, that level of acceleration now. But what I saw that surprised me was the universal appetite to move fast and the universal sentiment that I can't move fast in the safety and security are, security are handled, which is the reason why we got into this so aggressively. Hmm. And we, you know, we bought a company, Robust Intelligence, last year uh, in, in the summer, and then um, you know now we are, um, you know, we have a product that's coming out. And even the reception that I got from people on, I, oh, I you were hounded outside. It was yeah. amazing. And we've never had product launches like this, where every single customer I talked to said, "Can you make sure you get us turned on on a trial right away?" Mm. This was not like, "Okay, I'll see how it works," and then you come back to me. Because most customers are like. Try it out on someone else and then come to me. Over here, it was universal. Hmm. Can you make sure that you get me on a trial because I'd like to move fast on this thing? You mentioned the trough of disillusionment. Do you think we're going to see that with agents? Yes. And and when is that? When should I prepare myself for the letdown? I, I think you'll. whenever there's a very, very steep hype cycle where everyone starts talking about something, mm -hmm. um, we are kind of, you know... It's all true, but it might take longer mm -hmm. than what everyone thinks. And it's like the thing I always like to think about is we always overestimate the impact of a technology in the short term and grossly underestimate it in the long term. And imagine if we could buy um, AI engineers as a subscription that are digital, right? And that are... We're starting to see that. We're starting yeah. to see that. But that can literally get an entire job done. And what would the skill need to look like for a product manager who is dealing with 80% AI engineers and 20% human engineers? That's gonna be a very, very interesting learning curve. Yeah. What happens then when a product manager gets to be 80% of their time, AI, and AI product manager, 20% of the time being a human um, uh, you know, kind of product manager. So I, I do feel like there's gonna be a level of ups and downs that we'll see in this industry, but the, the general trend line and the direction will be a exponential curve up, but you'll have bumps along the way. And that those bumps along the way are more around sensationalism, skeptics actually um, you know, being a little bit more. If you look at the composite progress we've made, it's hard to be critical of this industry, just mm -hmm. in the past two years. Um, but, but I think that you'll find people that are skeptics that don't really think that this, and that's, now it's gotten to be like five or 10% of the people but it, it used to be probably 50% yeah. on November 30th. I, mean, I remember I the distinct it. time when GPT came out. I was uh, on November 30th, November 31st, I was flying somewhere and I was talking to a couple of people and they're like, yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. I'm like, this week pivoting, so we pivoted our budget almost like in a very, very large way towards this by like d mid December. What, what was that first call even like? Um, or meeting in person? Um, first meeting with whom? When you decided to make that pivot, oh, that budget, it, like it, what I, was that? People moment? thought I was crazy. Like this guy's lost his mind. Uh -huh. And you know we, and, but but there were a few people that were believers. And I remember I was heading to Australia, and one of my leaders, Anurag, and I were walking down, um, um, you know, after dinner. And I'm like, Anurag, this is 
like we, we've been doing AI for about five, six years, but this was a catalytic moment. And I'm like, we're gonna have to double, triple, quadruple down. And he's like, I agree. This is next level. Let's just make sure that we move forward. And we, wow. we had started seeing some work prior to November 30th, but yeah. November 30th is when you saw the public reaction to it, mm -hmm. which was what was really interesting. And, um, and then we, we just acted accordingly. So I think you have to have enough conviction yeah. when something like this comes. Big companies are not bad at placing a lot of bets. What they're bad at is doubling down when one of them works. And that's what we have to do. And having that feedback. And having that feedback and having the yeah. conviction that then popular opinion doesn't matter because you've got conviction that this is going to work. I mean, you've got to make sure you place all, you have to go all in. You had mentioned overestimation, underestimation. Let's say, hypothetically, that you have underestimated the importance of security in the enterprise, which I know is hard to imagine because you really just put all of that out there with that launch. Let's just say we've underestimated that. What does security in AI even look like in two, three, even five years? I think it gets meaningfully more important and more complicated the moment that robotics starts to come about and humanoids come about. And, you know, like Aaron was talking about the Terminator scenario being the 1% case where he, he doesn't want to... 1% is pretty that. high, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that Terminator scenario happens if safety and security go awry. Yeah. You know, and... Right now, I think there's a lot of complexity in the global world um, with what's happening across different geographies, different countries, nation state attacks. Uh, this will be, you know, like a warfare will start with cyber. Um, when you have an engine that is by definition non-deterministic and unpredictable, um, that is the easiest thing to go out and attack. And we don't have, like in, in the classical application development world, you've got this vulnerability database, CVE, that's there that says, okay, what is, uh, what is my severity score on this? And you know, if, something, if I were to ignore this, what would the potential implications for me be? We don't really have that in AI. And so I do think when that starts to, um, um, you know, when use cases get more and more prominent as agents start doing more of the work, as you have more and more of your percentage of your workforce that gets to be digital, you're gonna to have to make sure that security and safety, because those will become business ending events. And so mm -hmm. I feel right now that regardless of how much someone might um, think this is important, they're underestimating the importance of security and, and safety right now. Wow, I mean, yeah. that's a big statement. It's, it's a big, big statement, statement, but it's actually true because think about how much we're willing to live with today. And I guarantee you that we will not have the appetite to live with that much in the future because wow. the consequences will be much higher, especially as you have more of this infiltrated into society. I mean, you also have line of sight to just the pace of change and maybe others, especially if they spent the last year and a half convincing their company to start caring, they maybe haven't been paying attention yeah. to the pace of change. I wanna ask you with one final question, yeah. which is what is one action item that you would give to enterprise leaders or even small, medium business owners, consultants, solopreneurs watching this, what is one thing you want to leave them with? I think um, going in into something with a very deep learning mindset in this space is so important. That's why I think what you're doing is so important. Thank you. Um, and um, we are at a state right now where every assumption that we have held in humanity is going to be challenged. And that's okay because good things will come out of that, but we also can't be uh, delusional about the bad things that could also come out of it. And you have to make sure that you're learning on both sides constantly and pressure testing. And uh, the, the binary, what I feel is you're, you have to get into a mental model where new data should change your mind and change your opinion. And you should not think of that as, oh, I'm flip-flopping. You should think about that as I am evolving my perspective based on new inputs that are coming mm -hmm. in, which right now I don't think um, everyone instinctively does. And I think in this case, the ones that'll, um, um, that'll not do that will, be, will find themselves to be very irrelevant. It's not, I, I wouldn't worry, I think Jensen had said this, that you know, uh, don't worry about AI taking a job, worry about the person that actually uses AI well that might take your job. Mm -hmm. And I think we, the ones who will use AI well will be open-minded to instructing their perspective based on data and new data that keeps coming in so that they can keep changing their perspective. I love seeing a willingness to pivot as a strength. I mean, that is yes. profound. So Jithu, thank you it's so much. 
Thank you for this event. Thank you for coming. I, and I'm very excited that you've already guaranteed. We're going to do it next year. Yeah. Will you be here again? I hope so. Excellent. I hope so. Thank such you so much. Appreciate it.